Hi there folks, welcome back to my channel and for this video I am going to be doing another little video for my History Folklore Mythology series and I am going to be looking at a figure from Borders History called Folklore that I'm not too sure how well he's known outside Scotland and I'm not too sure how well he's known inside Scotland, inside Scotland itself but he's still a very interesting and intriguing figure and character and yeah and I think he's kind of someone who deserves to be better known and the person I'm going to be talking about is someone called Thomas the Rhymer and I will be getting onto that in a just a few in a moment or so so just to say if you are enjoying my videos if you are enjoying my channel just click on that on that subscriber button click on that notification bell leave some likes, leave some comments, it's always really appreciated. And I will, if you're wanting to support the channel further, I will be posting a link to the channelscoffee.com page in the description bar below and in a pinned post in the comment section as well. So as I was saying, the person who I'm going to be talking about today is someone who is better known as Thomas Rhymer. But he is also known as Sir Thomas de Ericaldun, and I do hope I'm pronouncing that pronouncing that right. And he's also known as Thomas Lemont, and he was also known as True Thomas. And he was actually born in roughly about twelve twenty, again with so many people at that time, even some of the the really big names. Like William Wallace, we don't really know exactly when they were born, but the the, the date of his birth is usually given given as about twelve twenty, and he was born in the in Erlston, which was during the medieval during the medieval period, in the third back in the thirteenth century, it was called Erkelden, which is why he was called Sir Thomas de Erkelden, uh, which is the down in the borders. And he died roughly about, you know, he did die in 1298, which was the year of the first battle of Falkirk. So that would mean that he was roughly about 7 to 8 years old, which when you think about it, today is a fairly good age, back in the medieval period. That would have been quite a feat to achieve. And essentially, Thomas Rhymer's claim to fame, the reason why people still know who he is, is essentially because he was a poet and a prophet, as well as being a laird. But he is generally tend he is generally tend to be more famous for being the fact that he was a prophet. But he was also known as his other epitaph suggests, he also had did not have the ability to lie which is why he was called True Thomas. And as the legend goes, uh, with the stories that have built up about uh, Thomas Rhymer, he was taken by the, the Queen of Elfland into Elfland, so into, into the fairy belt. And he, I think he was, he was supposed to have stayed there for, I think somewhere between three and seven years. And... As with so many many of these stories, uh, you usually always find that kind of the the person in question will spend one night, or it feel for them they've spent one night in the realm of the fairies, but they come back and years have passed in the world of the world of man. I'm not too sure how as if if that is an aspect of the story, because it is kind of something that. I will need to read up on more because he is a kind of a really intriguing figure. But when Thomas was returned to the world of man, he returned with the ability to foresee the future and he also could not tell a lie. It was, it was actually his tra trip to Elfland and his return to the world of man that caused him not to be able to tell a lie. And a lot of the kind of the, the ballads and stories that we have that it were kind of written down 
are actually originate from the 1400s. So somewhere within about 100 years at or from his death, the stories were starting to be the, the stories and the ballads began to be written down. And a lot of these kind of stories and legends probably were developing and growing in the intermediate in the kind of intermediate period between uh, Thomas's death and the stories being written down in ballad form. And even though Thomas Reimer as a figure, as a character, is often associated with folklore and mythology and with the ballads, we do know that he was an historical figure. Not very much is known about him as an historical figure. He is kind of quite, kind of, it, there isn't really kind of many references to him within the written, the written record. There is one that's made that refers to Thomas and to his heir. And I think it was also called Thomas. But other than that, there isn't really anything that we know about him historically other than roughly when he was born, when he died and where he was from and that he was a landowner. And there have been a number of prophecies that, that have been attributed to Thomas Reimer. And I think with a lot of them it has actually been proven that they were written at, late, at, at a later date and were then attributed to Thomas Reimer almost as if to kind of give them a sense of legitimacy, legitimacy or a kind of sense of weight. Because uh, I think this is something that has happened to like, even people like Nostradamus, that people in, uh, kind of after Nostradamus have da has died, people write prophecies and then attribute it to the famous name in order to kind of get people to believe that this is a, a surreal prophecy and it's come true and it's kind of make, makes things a bit murkier but it does add to a sense of the mystery and the intrigue surrounding Thomas Reimer. But probably the most famous prophecy that we know of that is connected to Thomas Reimer is the one that apparently foretells the death of Alexander III, King of Scots who was the, the last of the Camor dynasty. And it was the death of Alexander III that led, essentially led to the, the Wars of Independence. So that's kind of quite a big prophecy. And I'm kind of going to paraphrase it a wee bit. But essentially it stated that a wind was going to blow through the Kingdom of Scots, the which had never been seen before. Which is supposed to be in reference to the storm that was blowing through Scotland on the night that Alexander III died. And it was because of that storm that Alexander III did actually die because it was during that storm that he was thrown from his horse. And as a figure, as a kind of folklor a folkloric come historical figure, Thomas Reimer has actually been featured in a number of novels as a kind of say character but there have been some that have actually focused on Thomas Reimer as the main character. And probably the most famous of those books was actually written by, Ni by Nigel Tranter, who is, was famous for writing numerous books on Scottish history. It's kind of, it's, it's just kind of written novels about William Wallace, about Robert the Bruce, and the one that he'd written about Thomas Reimer is called True Thomas, and was written in 1981, or was published in 1981. And I think what kind of adds more to the intrigue and the mystery about Thomas Reimer is the fact that so little is actually known about him. And he has, with the, the kind of passing of time, become more of a folkloric figure than a historical figure, even though he did actually exist. And I think kind of that in itself kind of just adds, as I was saying, to the mystery, the intrigue, and possibly to the kind of the enjoyment of him as a figure. So 
unfortunately there isn't really much more that I can really say about Thomas Arriver because there is so little about him. But again, he's kind of one of those kind of just really interesting figures. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I you you found what I was talking about intriguing and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.